Still good morning, right? Yeah. Good morning. Um, I think just like most first practices, uh, great energy. Um, guys were excited to get out there. You never, I can't remember really any event many times where you had to coach up the excitement and passion. Um, I was all there. Uh, these guys worked hard. We're excited about practice one. So, um, you know, always going to be far from perfect, uh, but each side had its moments and, uh, you know, made plays. And, that's uh, that's what you want. I love being the head coach in those times, right? Because the assistants, uh, you know, they want every play to be perfect, and so you know they win half, they lose half the time. I get to win all the time because I just choose the side that wins uh, on that play. But no, it's uh, it's good having that good, that give and take, and um, you know, I felt that's what we had, and um, you know, uh, just welcome to, welcome to the South, right? Uh, for me in particular, just uh, practice in the and a little bit warmer uh, than. Then uh, the rest of the summer, uh, it hit us here uh, with practice one. So guys grinded through it. Uh, I thought actually um, they kept getting stronger as the day went on, which is what you want to see. And, uh, you know, they kept their spirits high through the very last rep. Yeah, and for for a guy like Ryan Williams, what was going to be key for him through these preseason practices to develop so he can be ready to play at this level? Yeah, consistently just in this trajectory on up. Um, you know, I don't need him day one. I mean, you want every play to be amazing, explosive, but you just want him lining up right, um, doing the fundamental things, uh, making the easy plays, and then, you know, because of his ability, uh, the big ones will come. So, you know, when your route's on air, run a good route, catch the ball, accelerate out with good ball security, you know, and you find those consistent uh, fundamentals and, you know, you stack days and um, those plays that we know uh, he'll be capable of making will happen. What have you, you seen from Caden and his body? Sorry. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. What have you seen from Caden Brocker and his body just since he's gotten back, and also just how he's been welcomed back by guys like Elijah? It, I don't have a huge, I guess, understanding of what he was a year ago, other than watching on film. But it, it feels like he's in really good shape and and lean. Um, you know, when you ask people who would have an understanding, Coach Ballou and so forth, um, you know, it'd be nothing but positive about the progress he's made. Uh, Strength and explosive numbers, I know, are up. Um, you know, that's that's facts. That's real. Um, and then also just uh, the way his body looks. Um, you know, leaner. I mean, he's just so dense. And he's got so much mass. Um, he's going to be, be big no matter what. So um, loved his demeanor out there. Um, he's he's. Uh, it's good to have him. Good to have him back. You know, good to have him here. So you, you touched on the conditioning efforts. How do you feel like the staff has done with that now that it's 85 degrees at 10 a.m. and will we see you in a sweatsuit like Coach Bond? No, you won't see me like that. <laughs> That's his thing. I'll just let him him do that. Uh, I think uh, uh, the strength staff, you know, Coach Ballou, they, they, he's been doing this here now. He knows what it takes of what the what that looks like throughout the summer, uh, even going in back into the winter. Um, and you know, uh, it's to me, it's now it's getting football shape. You know, and you try to replicate that as best you can. And I, I know he's all over it, um, but there's still something about putting pads on, having that helmet on. You know, some guys wear a mask, and you know, just breathing through that. Even, um, you know, having a mouthpiece in, all that good stuff. So, uh, these guys, I, you know, they had a good day out there today. You have three new uh, transfers and spring transfers from the secondary. What did you see from them? Uh, and what have you seen from them so far? Yeah, you know. Um, I always like to see the film before, but uh, before I make too many comments on missed assignments or anything like that, uh, one or two plays I think uh, might be, you know, a little bit more uh, that, that happened because of maybe those guys being in there and just not uh, in sync completely. But that's expected, you know. Practice one, um, you know, new faces out there on the field, but I, I love their energy. I love their attitude. They give great effort. Um, uh, they've really meshed well with the whole team. I think there's a ton of respect by their teammates. Uh, that's what you want. Um, the lead, a lot of that starts with just their character and uh, the work ethic that follows along. And they got ability, uh, now it's just a matter of getting those reps um, so they can be confident in themselves and others can be confident in knowing uh, and believing that they're going to be in the right spot. And, and uh, that's the direction I think they're headed. Sorry. Just overall, a lot of fans, a lot of players are trying to learn your way. First day of practice, do you not make a knee-jerk reaction on what you saw? Would you please, if you could summarize it, what you saw, do you not, if there yeah. was a bad day, go yeah. drastic and say it to the media? Yeah, yeah, no, I I mean, I, you got to be real. Um, and that's what I, I tell our guys. And, you know, I'm going to tell our, our team on a Sunday, um, 
you know, after a game, it, what it was, you know, it's, it's tell the truth Sunday, and we got to be real. And then, you know, it, it, when it comes to games, everyone can see it. You know, if you got to be better, or if it was a great day, um, I mean, I think it's usually pretty obvious. Uh, and when it comes to practice, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we can't just gloss over things ever. We gotta, we gotta understand where we're at, and uh, we have relationships with each other, so we can be real and. Uh, hold each other accountable. And, uh, today, I thought it was a great practice. Um, anytime, you know, in every day, there's things to learn from. You learn from the good, you learn from the bad, you learn from others' mistakes um, and your own. And so uh, a lot of that happened today, the good, the bad, the mistakes. And uh, we get to go watch film. We get to talk about it here, team meeting. And uh, we got a real it was a positive day. Um, I really feel like we've made the most of every practice since I've been here going back to this spring. You know, some are obviously going to be better than others. But you talk, you talk about uh, both sides got wins today, but even if, if, with it being the first practice, would you say that either the offense or the defense is ahead of the other at this point? And also, what happened to your leg? <laughs> yeah, there's our our, uh, our custodians do a really good job mopping the floors, and I didn't realize it. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's not on them. That's on me. Uh, uh, as far as who won or who's ahead, I guess uh, I, I don't really I don't really feel like there's one side of the ball. I think uh, there's position groups within that um, are continuing to rise up, um, you know, and uh, you know I think it's pretty balanced across the, across the board, you know, with the whole team. Coach, how beneficial was it to have a full spring with Jalen Noro as you now kind of have a baseline of communication and understanding as you've been in football? How how good is it? What to just to have the communication that you already have established? Yeah. You know, I just try to most racks uh, when I talk about rackets, you know, whatever four or five play sequence or a drive um, in practice. I just love following up with him and um, he just takes all the coaching and he knows uh, when I coach him up, that's my job. You know, we talk about, you know, teaching and critiquing and demanding, you know, excellence and, and the best. And he uh, he takes that, you know, and every play looking for it, um, you know, and, and working to be better. Uh, I, but he had a really solid day all around. And uh, I know he's far from reaching what he'll be even come next week, much less uh, the first game. Is there any difficulty so far getting guys used to morning practice versus them being used to the afternoon? Yeah, I think um, I think certainly. I think that uh, a few guys, even though we uh, really pushed it hard, I think they underestimate the um, just the fuel they got to get in their bodies. And so, which leads to cramping and things like that. So um, they'll learn from it. That's part of this process. That's part of, we talk about them um, grinding every day, refining everything, whether it's note taking in the meetings to their craft and the, the technique they have to, man, I gotta eat more. I gotta get more sleep. Gotta drink more, you know, uh, hydrate and all that. So I think there's a couple of guys, you know, when you go really follow up on, you know, the cramping is like, what'd you eat? You know, and you, they didn't eat enough, you know? and so. Um, that that will become a positive uh, because throughout the week, um, you know, we don't want that cumulative fatigue that can happen. Um, and by practicing and the, the schedule that we'll be on, um, I just feel like we got it down to where these guys uh, will understand it and be able to adjust accordingly and take advantage of it, not uh, fall fatigued to it. How can the experience of Deshaun Jones help that corner with so much youth at that spot? Um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's taking some snaps at the college football level, and so um, we need him out there. Um, I think there's a confidence about him you know, just because of that. That uh, yeah, we need in our pro we need in in our program always, but also in that position room. And um, you know, all of those guys. The cool thing is, I think they they all respect each other and just pushing each other, learning every single day. And Coach Moe's doing an awesome job. How important is fall camp going to be for the offensive line? Just meshing with Parker back, Carson, the team, and Caden back. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. I mean, that's that's where it all starts. Uh, I think your team is always um, going to be maximized, uh, you know, based on what your offensive line can do because it sets the tempo and it forces the defensive line and linebackers to really do a good job of fitting their gaps and run. And um, you can protect the quarterback to where he can go through his reads and, and uh, receivers, you know, having time to go through their routes. Defensive backs now having to make plays uh, because the protection's there. So uh, these guys up uh, front. Um, you know, really, a couple of them haven't been there uh, throughout the spring. But like you said, Parker now back in there, um, Caden here, um, you know, Pritchett still, uh, 
you know, took a lot of reps, so uh, he had a nice day. Uh, I thought Wilkin did a nice job, you know, so a lot of mixing and matching, um, especially at the tackle position, I guess. Uh, the interior three was pretty consistent, uh, but uh, they, uh, they, they, their reps are going to be really critical for our success. And I'm they're, there. they're them gelling. On the other side of the ball, we saw Jaheim kind of move in. We didn't see him in the spring. Is he back full? What, what did you see from him? Yeah, he was, he was almost ready right at the end of spring ball. And so he's had a good summer and uh, excited about what he'll bring to the table for us. So he was right on the verge. If we'd had one more week of spring ball, we would have probably made sure he was out there uh, at that time. Hey, Coach, from a speaker standpoint, will you bring in speakers at Rock Camp to talk to your team? And if so, mm -hmm. do you know some of those names? I do. Uh, the team doesn't know those names, so I can't. Sure. Um, but we uh, we will certainly have some guys. You know, um, I think first year especially, uh, I really it's important to me to try to lay that culture, uh, just make sure it's all right where we want it. And so I eat up a lot of that time through different things that I've either done in the past or again just starting over from scratch uh, with us all being new together. Um, you know, the one thing to the one thing our guys are, they're still, they're still finishing summer school here these next couple days. And so they have a big block that I even just blocked off here this afternoon. We did the same thing yesterday. And then Friday, um, there's some finals that are getting taken. It's not the whole team, but it's a pretty good chunk. And um, graduation here at the end of the week as well for a few guys. So excited about that. But they're finishing summer school. Um, there will be a couple weeks where they don't have anything but football, but then they do start, you know, fall semester, uh, you know, 21st. So. Um, we'll bring some speakers in. I think it's great to hear from, you know, people who have been through it, experienced great things. Um, you know, that's fun. That's been a tradition here, I know, uh, something the guys really enjoy. Um, and, you know, we'll keep growing that. But uh, this year, I just also wanted to dial it down a little bit and make sure, you know, the right messaging was continually coming from, from me uh, and our staff. When you're out of practice, you made a concerted effort to visit with every group. I'm interested in Coach Saban used to stick with the D-backs. I'm interested what your kind of philosophy is when you're out of practice. Yeah, I mean, I guess if I'm going to expect that uh, I have a relationship with all of them, I need to really be able to get around and they need to see me and, and that I, I care about their progress and can coach them up and, and sitting in the meeting rooms with them, uh, knowing exactly the details that they're being taught so I can emphasize it to them as well. And when they come up and see me in my office, uh, you know, it's not just general conversations and it's, 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 you know, we pop on the film and really talk through because I know what's being taught. I know, you know, um, you know, the reps and we have that relationship. And I, that's to me part of, you know, what Phil is, is a, is a strength of myself and the staff is us all working together. Um, us all, um, all the players just feeling like, man, you know, coach, Coach isn't just caring about this position or that position or that side of the ball. I know this is kind of a Nick Saban question, but he had the straw hat. I'm kind of picking up on that. I asked the media is now guy. He said he was behind, you were behind him. He had no idea. Do you have a thing that you do to stand out in practice, or you just kind of? I don't. I don't. This is what you get right here. So, <laughs> with with a broken shin. So. <laughs> The freshman defensive backs, what do they need to show you over the next month to make you feel like they're ready to play significant snaps in the fall? Yeah, um, they had a good spring. Um, and I, this is, again, they, they got some of the install again and got some of the technical work in the summer. But now here they get it uh, another time around. And so, you know, that growth, you always say growth from year one to year two. To me, it's from the spring to the fall. It's the second really full install of the time that they've, uh, they've kind of heard the lingo, the language, um, how they're being taught, the reps. And so uh, what we need to see from them is just taking that next big step. And then much like the question with Ryan, um, you know, also being a younger guy on offense, uh, you just want to see that consistency. You know, consistency builds trust. And that trust uh, is gonna, just going to be something that uh, the, whether old or young, um, we all got to gel. And whoever's on the football field, you know, there's got to be that trust within so uh, they can have confidence and go out there and make plays. Anything else? All right. All right. Appreciate it. Roll tight.